too, what's really interesting is that she's also shown, it looks like she's also shown um, pregnant. Yes, exactly. Right. We were just talking about that. You know, and I don't, and Kurt, I really, this is, I was looking at your gallery. I love when you put these together and I love the juxtaposition because I'm looking at the first page and I'm seeing those three different empresses, um, versions of the empress. And I see the one that's all like, I'm the empress, right? And then the third card from her, two cards down, it's like, I'm the spinster spinning yarn. It's a very different and a very large, right? Which you, you see- this You better press record right now. I did. Oh, we, oh, oh good, okay. okay. And where this, you know, you have in some depictions, the, the empress, the figure of the empress is very large. She takes up space, right? Um, and sometimes when you read some of the meanings that are associated with, with the empress, you'll say a large woman, <laughs> you know, or a large feminine presence. Um, and I think that that's, I think that that's really um, very interesting because certainly every deck has its own, its own, I'm going to go ahead and minimize that and then let the, the screen. Oh, wow. Yeah, so this is what Denise is referring to. And yeah. this is from the Llewellyn classic. So it's kind of like uh, Llewell, uh, it's Barbara Moore's attempt to make the writer white right or weight uh, more vibrant, like more sort of inject more life and more movement into her. So yeah, she certainly, she certainly knows she's the empress. Yeah. Well, yeah. And they yeah. teach us when you take workshops about being present and bringing your presence and not being small anymore, they teach us to go in and sit like a man, like, like open like that. And they would even tell you to open your legs too. Yeah. So she's and taking she, up space like purposefully, intentionally. Yeah. She's got some, and so she, and she's carrying with her. So she is, whereas the high priestess was the maiden essentially, um, she's giving uh, form to that, the, the, begin, the beginning of form uh, to that uh, energy of the high priestess. Um, so she has pomegranates on her dress. Uh huh. Here. and she's got the that. um you still see the waters uh -huh. um and then she's got a crown with um, 12 stars right uh -huh. and so that's the 12 uh 12 signs 12 signs of the zodiac um i believe there's reference in the book of revelation of a, of a crown with 12 stars as well if i'm not mistaken um, but I'll never, I was going to say really quickly, when you, when you point out the 12 stars, I remember reading deck reviews and I don't remember which deck it was. It, it was one of the versions of, um, the Rider Waite decks. And there were some really angry comments because there were not 12 stars on that crown. There were 11 stars on the crown. Oh, wow. And, it was like this oversight of, I cannot believe that there are 11 and not 12, you know, and just really kind of taking to task the publisher for printing something that was inaccurate. If they were in fact trying to, you know, it was writer weight, not writer weight inspired, but it was a version it, of. It, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm and wondering so, if it was a misprint. It's very possible. I mean, they ran the, the proof that, that, you know, one proof had the 12 stars, one had the 11. It's possible. Huh. It's interesting on Amazon, you know, for example, the, uh, if you look at the Thoth deck, they've got like, um, they've got a version from Germany mm -hmm. on Amazon. They have a mini version and then they have a large version and they're all from different publishers. Yeah. Like, you know, it's, it's like. Um, yes. Yeah, I hear that. So I, just, I think, yeah. I was going to say, you know, what's really interesting to me here too is that um, there's a podcast that I was listening to over the weekend as a way to, to prep for tonight. And it's been just kind of busy. So I didn't do as much prep as I had hoped I would be able to get done. But, you know, one of the things that that was definitely what they talked about. And they did that kind of word association, you know, that we've been doing for the last few weeks. It's like, when you look at this deck, what, you know, what do you think of that kind of thing? And, you know, they, they talked about things like, you know, fertility and, and um, 
uh, confidence and uh, uh, all of these mother nature, right? This idea of mother nature came out and there was a little bit of a conversation or about what does nurturance mean and what is nurture? And, you know, I, if I were part of that conversation, I'd say, well, mother nature is not necessarily, <laughs> Does it is not like a, I don't know that Mother Nature is a nurturing force, right? Well, I, uh, <laughs> that, actually, that, that actually comes up. That actually comes up quite a bit in the literature on the Empress. Um, yeah, I would be curious to hear what they say because Mother Nature is the nature of Mother Nature is um, is nature, right? And so it's this idea that it is going to express itself the way it needs to in that particular moment. And there's no, there's no apologies for that, right? And so well, I think some people would think about um, the difference maybe between tough love and I don't know, I'm trying to find well, an analogy. So, so the way, you know, Rachel Pollack talks about a lot of this and she's not the only one, but uh, so the Empress it, well, what strikes me first of all about the about this one that we were talking about is that the the high priestess is veiled, right? So, so she's hidden. The empress is 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 visible, you know. So her her um, so like you were saying, her confidence, her 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 power, her, her you know is 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 very apparent, very visible. Um, and even when it is veiled here, like this empress here has like a veil on. But the look on her face suggests that she has a secret. Oh yeah, yeah. she's. Um, but as far as the um, the 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 um, sort of destructive power, and I think it, it, it comes through a little bit in this Empress card, um, just with the, with her expression and how she's um, seated and everything. But so the atri the astrological attribution of for for the empress is venus so we see the venus symbol here um which the cross here is the, the the cross emblem on the on the venus symbol is the crossing of a threshold but the uh, in the circle that connects to it is 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 understood to be like the divine prom the the the, the sort of divine promise of ever presence that the the, the cycle never ends Right. Yeah. And, and it's also, um, of course, very, very much related to the Ankh. And of course, the Ankh is the 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 origin of the Ankh is the um, is the phallus and the um, the uh, yoni, you know, the the the, the, the sexual image. Right. Um, yeah. But but so the Venus, um, Rachel Pollack points out that not only is Venus known for you know love and and inspiration and, and these sorts of things you know Af aphrodite venus but also that venus would lead um lead her devotees into death you know would would would, would kind of shepherd her devotees into into the afterlife um and the other emblem aside from venus herself in 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 the and actually it's a stronger image with the empress is, is um, Demeter. And uh, with Demeter, she create, you know, she, she, she um, causes, she inspires, you know, growing things to grow, but she also stops the growth. Yeah. You know, out of mourning for her daughter and her daughter being taken into, to, uh, to the underworld, which, you know, we talked about with the high priestess. So you do have this capacity of the empress to 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 have that sterner side, and yeah, I I gave you life and I can take it away, kind yes, of. Yes, you know? yeah, <laughs> like in, and in, yeah, in and the empress, and the empress is also you know she's um, and I, I I lost my I, I lost my my train of thought there, but. Oh, uh, sorry no 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 that's fine it'll come back to me i'm sure or not if not um no worries but but well, yeah while you're thinking about that i'm looking at our empress on the right hand side and i see do you see the heart the framed heart yep above yeah. her with yeah. the venus symbol with the venus symbol there and it's so interesting right i just i just i'm looking at that and i mean the idea that one has a lot of heart a lot of empathy a lot of compassion and yet at the same time 
is able to sort of with impunity to do these other things as well. So I don't think that one sort of necessarily negates the other. It's just an interesting thing for me in terms of I'm, I'm just sort of spinning out the, the relationships here. Um, ah, and the spinning wheel, I said spinning out. Yeah, you said spinning out. And, <laughs> and, and, uh, and uh, yeah, and, so, and, and, and the Empress is, it's is related to, um, in, you know, there's, there are not, you know, and uh, there are other, there's only, there are only a few cards that are, that are gendered feminine in, in the deck. The Empress is, is can, can be talked about in the same breath as like the Norns, for example, you know, spinning the, spinning the fates, mm -hmm. you know, the fates, the, mm -hmm. but, but uh, what I was thinking about earlier is that the, the Empress is creativity, but she's chaotic creativity. Yeah, I right. love it. So um, the the emperor or emperor gives order to creativity. The empress is the just the flow of creativity, but it's not to get to this possibility. There is all of this yeah. kind of um, there. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There's this, you know. I, I kind of think of it as an overgrown lawn, or you know, something along those lines, right? It's sort of like we can grow, 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 and sprout, 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 and do all this kind of stuff. But then here comes the, um, you know, here comes the the person with their <laughs> with their clippers, right, in the form of the emperor, who's going yeah. to go in and neaten it and make it structured in such a way that, yeah, adheres to the culture. Here's the water that we saw in the high priestess, and here she's putting her foot in it. She's putting mm -hmm. putting her toe in the water, and here she has a horn of plenty, right? Um, well, and those are her wheat stalks. So you're seeing those, yeah. um, CJ. You're seeing this sort of wheat yep. here that, in the dreaming way, sort of really expands and leans into. And the wheat stalks are supposed to represent the triple goddess. Mm. That's, the, that's the sort of the overarching kind of consensus on that. Okay. Um, Full cycle kind of thing in terms of the, oh, these are fun. You know what I love about the green woman? Oh, she's gorgeous. I just love her. And, and I'm kind like, of androgynous. Loving that too. hair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> love it. She looks like a female to me, Kurt. Look at those hips. Well, yeah, yeah. and then she's pregnant. But I was looking at, the, oh, she's, I, I thought it, she had a mustache, but it's not. But she's got a. And to me, she doesn't necessarily even look pregnant. I just, that's like a normal woman's body. Oh, you're right. She's yeah. not. No, she's not pregnant or not very not pregnant. Her. Right, there's this sort of- And I can see term. the part of her cleavage. She's very womanly. God, she is fucking gorgeous. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. she's gorgeous. No, yeah. I, I put not okay. for kids. I put not for kids on all these. It's yeah. <laughs> she's, she's actually, I mean, I, I sat back and I was like, whoa. What the heck is that, Kurt? This is the uh, uh, Wildwood. Wildwood, really? Wildwood, and it's it's basically like uh, the the premise of it is um, pre Celtic Sherwood Forest. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, because wow. because the guy that created it, interestingly enough, he was an actor in my very my very favorite version of the Robin Hood story. He was one of the actors in it. He was uh, Robin of Sherwood that came out in like 1982. Um, yeah. He, he played Nazir, the the Saracen. He played the Saracen in that with the devil swords that would fight. But but that's the guy that went on to make this tarot deck, who actually grew up near Sherwood Forest and would play in Sherwood Forest as a kid. Oh wow! You know, um, how beautiful! Just that takes my breath away. And so and then you know, he's got this cauldron, and is that? Mm -hmm. that the white in it, Kurt, is it supposed to be? Because it doesn't look empty because it's a different color. No, it's not empty. She's scrying that. She's scrying in that cauldron, probably, yeah. or she's or she's cooking up something in That's that. That's the cauldron. possibility. That's the potential. Yeah. That's yeah. the creativity. It looks and, like it almost looks like milk, right? It probably so. does look like milk, which would make it. Yeah, that would be the yeah. feminine. Um, and then let's look at the figure on front of the cauldron. 
Yes. Right. Oh, and yeah. my God. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then did we saw this figure last? Yes. In yes. The, uh, in the in the uh, African light deck. Yeah. It, Actually, in the dark, in the uh, dark goddess deck, this was the fool. The fool image was this. The fool. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna say. So that Actually, was. It's, it's this exact image. Yes. Exact. That so, is really interesting. What is this character? Do you know? I don't know. I don't. I oh this the this. Yeah. So so according to the dark goddess deck, it was an image that was put on churches. Oh along with gargoyles to yeah. basically like frighten people, you know, frighten off negative stuff. Okay. But apparently, but, but apparently like predates, predates, you know, Christian architecture. Um, Very and, cool. and, and people think of it as good luck to essentially touch the uh, yoni of the, of the, 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 the goddess creature. And um, and yeah, so it's a, it's a fertility um, fertility goddess. Yeah. Um, and it but, came from where, Kurt? I missed that part. Uh, Europe, somewhere in Europe. Oh. Fertility and this goddess. is a and this is a, a you know, and this, the whole idea here is this is like pre pre Celtic sh uh, shamanism. Mm. Uh, so British Isles shamanistic before the Celts arrived. Yeah, yeah. Wow. See, if they had taught that. me history like this in class, in this way, I would have remembered stuff. <laughs> no, right. And see, this is how they teach history now in college. Yeah. Anyway. yeah. You have to go out and you have to do like ethnographic, you know, uh, stuff and yeah, American. yeah. Students still complain about it, but it's a lot more fun than, you know, sitting there in a lecture hall, right? Well, the whole cultural analysis stuff, right? That's yeah. Out, which I think is really grounds it and makes it really meaningful for, for it, students. Yeah, yeah, for people. Yeah. I, and, you know, maybe a little bit of reader response in check with, you know, here is sort of the historical grounding for this, which I think is right. always good, right? So that context, um, you know, I mean, because tarot is, is, to the degree that it's subjective as you're doing those readings, right? It's really oh, yeah. subjective to the degree that you are emphasizing or focusing in on an aspect of, of the images. Really. Oh yeah. And Just you know, and I, I said this them. to someone on our, our list on our group today is it's like each card is gonna be different for every person, you know. Yeah. And it, you know, like like I said earlier before we turned on the recording that you know, I've been getting various cards, you know, the five of cups, uh, a lot of sword cards, uh, you know, the tower repeatedly and different. And, and, and really, sometimes it takes a few weeks before that stuff to bear out. Yeah. To see, you know, exactly how it's going to, what it's going to mean. But also, too, you know, that, 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 that um, you know, and I'm not a physicist, but, you know, if if energy moves in waves, then then the whole then the tarot is contingent upon those waves, you know, going somewhere, and so that can always be changed. It can always be, you know, right, you know. And so I have a really good friend who's a physicist, actually. So I think he'd probably be interested in this conversation. He's also he's from India. He grew up in India and spent all of those formative years there, and so has a really which I think have a really interesting kind of um, um, perspective, right? So that, that would be really cool to, to talk to him about because it is so funny. I didn't know he was a physicist until I always thought he was a computer scientist and he's that too, but his, all of his doctoral work was in um, physics. Yeah, and he's ABD, right? So did some, you know, got to that point and then just, you know, the way life sometimes just falls apart to the point where, you right. know, the, you, you have to take care of yourself in these other ways. So yeah, he was, um, he's brilliant. So is she holding a spindle, a drop spindle? Yes, I just yeah. noticed, I thought it was a bell, but I went to this Karen Knight, the lady I just invited to the group. 
Uh-huh. It is a spindle. Yeah. And, yeah, and she is. has like 36 looms at her house and she invited me in. And the only way I knew what that was is because she showed me how she was creating yarn out of that very expensive wool. No, it's, it's mm-hmm. interesting that they chose Guinevere for the Arthurian deck because, of course, one of the attributions of the Empress is sexual passion. Mm-hmm. Um, and we know, of course, Guinevere and Lancelot and, and so on, you know. So, um, and uh, so that's interesting. So not only is she, you know, the queen, but she also there's also that whole subtext and you know about her. So that's kind of cool. And and I believe is this a cow in the background? Passionate. That, yeah, with horns like so a the, steer. So the cow is going to come up again with the emperor <laughs> because the cow is like a universal symbol for fertility. And in fact, you know, in India, the cow is one of the seven mothers. Uh, is, every, is, everyone has seven mothers. The cow is one of them. Um, and uh, the cow is, uh, and in fact, the earth goddess, her, her form um, in, in, uh, in Vedic understanding is, is a cow, a boomy cow. The earth goddess. She's a cow. So, um, and does it matter that this is a male, that he's a steer? Uh, I mean, that's kind of that's an interesting take on For it. A bull? Is it a bull? A bull. It's well, a bull? no. I mean, it look well. Does it look intact? I can't tell. No, <laughs> no, it it is no. It's a male for sure. It's a bull. It's kind of interesting because the bull is um, the bull is Dionysus. The bull is. I mean, the bull is male virility. So, so that's interesting. We have the we have the male virility, and we have the female. You know, we have the female. But it almost looks y'all like he has udders down there but it's yeah. a male like females don't have horns like that do yes, they, they do. yeah they do uh-huh. oh females do oh well yeah, there's there's an udder sack under there okay so she's a female so we're, it's a female okay i she's think i mean to the, i'm using a magnifying glass <laughs> <laughs> i love it but it's that same kind of that same kind of idea of um you know the milk of life and right. milk being able to and we have all the white here too which mm-hmm. would indicate that as well you know yeah and then but the, but then she's got you know she's got the empress's green um the verdant uh colors on her outfit these are probably lilies which are associated color lilies which are associated with the empress yeah. and she's got the crown right made of the yeah. flowers yeah. the jasmine yeah. or whatever yeah i really like the or i didn't have a chance to read the 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 narrative that went along with this card that goes along with this card every card even even the minor arcana in this deck has a narrative that goes with it like an actual theory and tale that goes with every card oh that's awesome see i think that makes it even more um um, just rich really yeah and so does the um so does the mythic deck also is it the mythic deck when i when i posted when i created the event i went to pixabay to look for creative commons photos and images and i noticed this is the one i was able to download because it was available at the empress right they only had a couple of them and so i was wondering what this deck was and i didn't have enough time to track down the source yeah and there's a whole controversy about this because okay a lot of people love a lot of people like this comes from the, this this is a screenshot from the app and a lot of people like the app actually better than the deck that's out now because this is the original art for the deck the deck that uh the deck that's out now mythic deck it's a different it, they changed the art mm. and, and a lot of people are like you change you know this is not the deck i had you know 25 years ago what's going on with this you know, no, don't mess with people's tarot decks. You know what I mean? I mean, there's so some- you're talking about the third card over here, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this, right. this yeah. is this is Demeter. I mean, this is this is Demeter. You know, this this is, you know, and and, and she's the, her fertility is is very evident here, but there is a slight somberness to her as well. Um, 
Well, she's wearing the crown of what looks like civilization or a kingdom or a castle or mm -hmm. so yeah, there's I, kind of architecture that comes to- It does look like she's got, yeah, it looks like she's got a, a city on her head. Basically. And so I, I think of the encroachment of, you know, the city into the country, into, into nature. Um, which I think is just a really interesting positioning between the two. Um, as if we, you know, we've been talking about uh, the Empress as a kind of association with Mother Nature and being wild and, and right. all of this fertility and growth and all of this kind of stuff. And then here's the city, which is very much I associate with the Emperor um, in terms of the, the, hard, the hard structure and the, the culture and the rules and the laws and all this kind of stuff. So isn't that interesting, right? That it's on her head. Um, she's wearing that, or maybe it's Wayne on her head. I'm not really sure. It's a it crown. Might be, it might be Wayne. It's a circular but, crown. I can okay. see the circularness of yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it, yeah, it is that, and but it's it's also this sense of you know the encroachment. Uh, I think. Oh yeah. Is, yeah. You know, and I live out here by. Um, I live close to UTSA. Okay. So it's, there are, I mean, if you drive down Babcock towards the medical center, like from UTSA towards the medical center, you can still see these homesteads, these older homesteads that were around when there were lots of acreage surrounding them. Mm -hmm. And just a couple of lights down, they cleared out an entire sort of, I don't know how many acres it is. Um, they didn't clean cut it, but they cleared out all of the brush, right? And so all of that wildlife then has to go and find a new place and new yeah. refuge. Um, and I'm on the green belt, the parkway, um, the linear green belt parkway that is um, part of that system that's in San Antonio, all the, the, the walking trails and such. And, and it's very, it's, it's amazing when you're walking on those trails because at some points, it feels like you're way out in a state park somewhere, right? Um, some parts of the trail. So I guess when I see this card, that's what that evokes for me, right? Where where this, that point, that space where those two meet. And they struggle back and forth maybe. And I forget, um, you know, they they order the cards a little differently in the um, in the mythic deck, and I forget where she falls exactly. Um, uh, but they change they change the the order of the major arcana a little bit to fit the Greek narrative. Mm. Um, That's cool. So what else do you have for us, Kurt? So this is from Rachel Pollock, and this is clearly, you know, like the Venus of Willendorf. Uh-huh. Um, image here, and, you know, this may be this, I don't know if this is supposed to be um, Venus in the, the star of Venus in the sky. Hmm. I'm curious, what does the red and blue in the moons represent? Mm -hmm. That I don't, I, I don't know. Um, There's a nice balance and, and symmetry and duality of the two mountains and the two moons, but then they're completely different in the way they... So in, in, uh, in, in um, the Golden Dawn tradition and in, in Rachel Pollock, draws on some of that and in, in a lot of these hermetic traditions there are yeah. different color scales for uh for different major arcana cards and so it may well be that these colors are um corresponding to the color scales for the empress very uh, cool <clears throat> And I think she also refers to this as um, winged Isis as well. And you'll see. Really? Yeah, because I mean. Oh, because oh, of the, the shoulder. Yeah. yeah. And you'll see that there is, 
a lot of these cards they have some of them will have wings and so it, it's it's a it's a carryover of that of isis from the um from the high priestess high priestess okay yeah yeah so you still have that um you so you have you have sort of a full-on venus and a full-on demeter but you also have elements of isis and so forth um And here is the uh, mm. shadow skate, and we actually read, we actually read the um, so each of the shadow skate so the way the shadow skate book so the shadow skate book and the shadow skate cards the the there's a little narrative that goes with each card, and the card is actually a snapshot of what happens at the end of the narrative. Uh, for each card. And so in the narrative, it specifically says that she, that all of these flowers and, and, and all these creatures have basically just given themselves over in celebration of the Empress. But the Empress is controlling the symphony. Or I forget, I forget the, ex the exact yeah, language. Exactly, keep going. But is controlling the symphony, the symphony of color and, and, and so forth with her thoughts. So it's it's her creativity that's make that's that's making all of this that making this display possible. Um, notice also, I didn't read the Shadowscape thing. I mean, I know I listened to you, but you had told me that the Empress also has to do with love and whatnot. Yes. And has hanging from her belt or her robe, she has a chain with a heart on it. Right. Yes. Yeah. And a lot of the Emperor's cards, and you will see, they're going to have hearts on them, just like the uh, High Priestess did as well. Um, and so, the hearts yeah. are her, her, but the love is more of like, like, is there any specific love? So, we're talking? so if we look, um, I don't know if I can get the this. state of being that I was talking to you about the state of being. Yeah. So I don't know. If, I don't know if you can see on the screen, but the no, the, because you're real little. But I'll okay. I'll use my. Oh, I'd, I'd have to unshare. I'll unshare. I'll unshare. No, no, do it again. I have a magnifying glass. Okay, no, but I'll unshare later because if people are watching okay. this later, they're not going to be able to see. Well, I'll Karen Knight is texting me, and she's saying sorry she missed the class. Tuesdays are kind of iffy next week i said we started late we're still on like can they just click and join in yeah, yeah, yeah. so in the in the kabbalah so what we so in, in the kabbalah you have you have the vertical path the vertical path straight down from the top is the high priestess and the path that crosses it uh, horizontally is the empress. And the empress crosses horizontally uh, connecting wisdom and understanding. So essentially the empress is the child of wisdom and understanding. Mm. And it's from that wisdom and understanding that you get that creativity. But at the point at which the high priestess and the empress cross, that is the door that is, is like the secret door if you will the the the, the uh the um hebrew letter that corresponds with the uh empress is dalith which is the door and so the idea is that the the, the empress is the door represents the door of creativity the door of the a door of 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 opening to abundance right and all of these all of these attributions of the empress but the secret is that the key to that door is love, right? The key to that door, the key to the door of the Empress is love. And this- Which is why you've got that heart there, is that? Probably, yeah. Yeah, that's why the Empress has all has the heart. Like we saw the heart in the corner before. Right. On the tree and- Yeah. Wow. And so, and, and, and that door, that's sometimes translated as door, sometimes translated as way. So, you know, in, in, um, you know, in most of the occultists that are 
that have written about tarot for a hundred years or whatever, really, yeah, really we're talking about, you know, the quote unquote modern era of tarot is basically 1910 to the present. So most of those folks were Christian occultists. So when you talk about the way uh, or the door or the way you're, you know, that, that they're associating that with, with Jesus, you know, saying I'm the way, the truth and the light. Well, the way the, 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 in the occultist mind, the way that he's talking about is the emperor is the crossing of the empress and the high priestess. Okay. And that she's that door of, uh, she's that door of love that, that, that door that is opened by love. Um, that leads to abundance, that leads to creativity, that leads to passion, all of these things. And, um, and you know, we also, you know, the scripture, you know, I stand at the door and knock, you know, and uh -huh. those things, right? And so to the, into the occultist, they hear that and they're like, in, 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 in what, what is being spoken of there are all these qualities of the empress, right? That, 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 that that's the, you know, that she is, she, in essence, right, and also the, another, another um, implication there is that she is the, she's the womb, so she, she is the Virgin Mary, right, she's the, you know, and, and so on and so forth, right, and has all of those attributions, mm -hmm. um, which is very easy to see with, mm -hmm. you know, with the preg the pregnancy, you know, and, sure. and so that's sort of classic like if you look at especially i think like uh like our lady of guadalupe yeah, yeah. Got the gonna, yeah, yeah. i uh, i think yeah i think our lady of what yeah our lady of guadalupe in fact um the one that we looked at before let me i'll just backtrack real quick just briefly so she is referred to sometimes as the corn goddess Mm -hmm. right and so that would be um the celtic the lady which is of course in our in reference to the lord and the lady of of wicca right the, the great goddess but she's also referred to as the sp corn goddess spouse of the corn god mm. so yeah and and the the our lady of guadalupe is honestly like really this beautiful um amalgamation of the energies of the high priestess and the empress yeah um somebody needs to do a texan deck there is a california deck there is a oh, california fine. deck somebody needs to do a texan deck and they could do you know we could have our lady of guadalupe we could have like you know it would i'm really surprised nobody's done it yeah but, how cool yeah you know, I think even if you did like a a San Antonio deck would be also a lot of fun. Who is it? John has that wonderful deck that he put together. Yeah, that's really cool. It's really yeah. beautiful. I still haven't bought it. No, yeah, I, haven't. I do love his devil card, though. His devil card is great. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And oh. there were many controversies over what picture to use on that. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, so many this, different perspectives, yeah. This next one, and I think it, uh, I think she goes to what um, oh Denise, my God. what you were saying, Gaia. You know, she is the Earth. She is, you know, Mother Earth, Mother and, Earth. and 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 she's and, and and she's got some sort of uh, some fecundity there of power, you know, and, and it's all and it's also and she's and it's also chaotic too. I mean, look at all that she's got going on. Yeah. Well, this sort of beautiful eclectic collection, right? Oh of, my God. Of everything within that realm, right? Everything in that area. And it's just represented here. I mean, I love it. There's the robins, you know, the nest with the robins eggs. And then, you know, if you look at the petals, right? Um, the petals of her dress, that too has a kind of um, image that's reflective of, 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 of a vagina. Right. right. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. So you've got all of these kinds of wonderful. You know, I would just like to have hair that looked like that. <laughs> for a day. That and the other deck. That hair is just awesome. Like for a headdress, I think it's amazing. Gorgeous. So what deck is that? This is the chrysalis. The chrysalis deck. Is that the chrysalis? Okay. Yeah. I've looked at that deck before. 
I like it. It's it, it is very it's extremely eclectic. It's extremely which I and I like I like that. I like all the eclectic yeah. stuff. And it's very bright, it's very vibrant. Um and it's also one of these decks that has a lot of, you know, the guidebook has a lot of information, you know, about the cards. That's awesome. I'd rather learn about, I mean, I guess it's like taking a class and looking at pictures instead of reading the, you know, I'd rather, I'd rather, you know, have a card or representation that will, can teach me about something, you know. You know, the, like the, some of the, Llew the Llewellyn deck sets. And this come, may be a Llewellyn deck, I'm not you know, sure. Well, they come with a, like, I, the few Llewellyn deck sets that I purchased um, have these beautiful books that accompany them. And they- uh, This one, the, 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 the um, Shining Tribe is a Llewellyn. Is Llewellyn okay. Book, I'm pretty sure. Shining Tribe. Yeah, yeah, this, and that, that's Rachel Pollock's deck. Yeah, this is her deck, okay. Yeah. And it's interesting because you don't see like, um, blatant Kabbalistic symbols and stuff on these cards, but in the description, she'll talk about all that stuff, okay. you know, like she, like she does in her, you know, Terra yeah. Wisdom book and so forth. All that wonderful context. So here we, go. Here, oh. here, here we go. Okay. Creativity. Uh -huh. That's all you need to say. <laughs> like, so, yeah. so one of the things and I was talking to, I was talking to Denise about this, one of the, the things that kept coming up with the Empress is the, uh, the golden ratio in art, mm -hmm. you know, the, 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 that you can, uh, it's an uneven, seg uneven, uneven line segments and that the, se the, the ratio between the large segment and the small segment is equal to the ratio of the large segment to the whole. Mm -hmm. And what happens when you repeat that over and over is you get these spirals. Mm. Right, and so that, and so if you think about mathematically, if you think about something like that, that's just so beautiful in nature, like the um, the golden ratio, you get into the ideas of, of creative, intelligent design, and and, and, and and things of that nature. The I, it's very difficult to refute the idea that nature is divine or that nature is sentient has sentience. You know, if you mm -hmm. you, you know, you start getting into this. The, yeah. Well, is it the, um, the Fibonacci um, sequence? Fibonacci sequence, yeah. Yeah, where you see that beautiful pattern, right? It's just uh, beautiful. She wow. has her stars here. Does she have 12? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, yep. eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yes, she does. Yay. And here we see the moon, which we haven't seen as much, but, but we see the moon again here. Um, and yeah, one of the major, oh, oh and the waters too, I didn't, uh, yeah, if you see the yes, water. The, the flowing, water. Yeah. 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 And that carries over in her body where the spirals and triangles are, there's still flowing vibes under there, which if you look at it closely again, right, if you go down right above the left side of the three, it almost looks vagina-like too right there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But right. you also get that flowing feel that it's still flowing, even though you're going into these geomet geometric hard edge shapes. Yeah. This is a really, this is a really fun deck to read with. Um, yeah. The Osho. I, I used to read with it almost. The extreme. Osho? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's real cheap on Amazon. It's marked off like it's 20, it's 19 bucks on Amazon. It's List price is like 30 something. It's $19 on Amazon. I'm going to tell you, Denise, that is my most worn out deck. When you look at the edges, they don't look black anymore. They've got white fleckles all over them. Yeah. It's my most worn deck. This is, it's a very, it's a fun deck to read with because of how much you can get intuitively just off of the image images um, on the cards. That's great. I love it. Now this this is kind of cool. I mean, this is this 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 is the triple goddess, um, but you also have. I mean, the, the the crone is basically embedded in the empress's throne, so that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got the bunny rabbit here, which which will, which comes up sometimes in in 
for, for fertility. fertility. Yeah. Yeah. But this it's, is a darker, this is a darker card. This is a very serious card. It is. But yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. This is from the um, as above. So below. As above. And then the below, this the, the as the so below one is is basically a mom taking care of a kid with a scraped knee. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty yeah. much all the Wait till we get to the devil card from this deck. It's one of the best devil cards. <laughs> uh, I'll just give you, it's, it's, it's a whole bunch of ice cream. You know, it's to me that just expect that's, that's, awesome. that's, that's the best explanation of the devil. <laughs> that's great. But oh my gosh, that's but awesome. yeah, she's taking care of her. She's taking care of her, her. And I like the, and, and now that I'm thinking, you know, now that I'm like seeing these cards side by side, I'm really, really getting why Barbara Moore insisted on doing this as a double deck because she has another Wicked deck. She has, she has a, she has a witch deck. I think Denise, I mean, uh, CJ, I think you showed it to me. Yeah, uh, I think so, I did. So, but see, with this double deck, what she's doing here is she's saying that, hey, you know, witches slash pagans slash you know um um however you want to say whatever whatever terminology you want to use we're normal normal people with you know everyday concerns like kids who scrape their knees and so on and right. so forth. and this is how we bring magic into the world you know you bring magic into the world by loving by loving by responding to responding with love to the needs of the people around you, which in this case would be a kid who, you know, scraped his knee. That's probably why we don't have so many people on our on our live meetings because we have so many of us in the group who are responding to the needs of our families, to the needs oh, of our. Yeah. So we're actually, you know, the people that can't make it on the live are actually using that empress energy, disseminating that empress energy out in their life. Um, it's interesting though, we've had this conversation about, you know, what does nurturance mean in the Empress and how does it get depicted here? And this, you know, juxtaposed with the idea of mother nature being sort of, mother nature is mother nature, right? The essence of mother nature is to express what needs to be expressed in that particular moment. And so part of me was like, well, mother nature is this sort of wild untamed thing. You cannot sort of, you cannot contain mother nature and um, certainly mother nature can be incredibly fierce and destructive. And yet at the same time, I see this and I'm like, and mother nature can be that too. That's a beautiful, warm breeze, gentle breeze at the time that you need it. Right. You know, that all of a sudden there seems to be that thing that happens. It's so gentle and it's so, it caresses gently and is soothing. And so, um, I, I certainly see this as a kind of a expression of that. Right. It's, so there is, and then you, and, and then look at the difference, the hardscapes over here, mm -hmm. um, the, um, the deck in the center, and then this uh -huh. very sort of lush soft scape over here. It, it's to the right. Yeah. 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 And also too, you know, uh, looking at her face, you know, she is not, she's not admonishing the kid for scraping his knee. She's actually, they're having a really good time. So yeah. Yes, because he's smiling back, and if you yeah. look, it looks yeah, like she's back. glowing from the inside out. Yeah. He probably, like, made a goal, you know, with his soccer ball, and she's like, hey, man, that was really cool. That and, was awesome. It was worth it for me, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, and you know, and you were talking about the destructive aspect of the chaos of the creative chaos of the empress. There yeah. it is, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that she has her watering can and all her gardening tools and her gardening oh, gloves yeah. in her pocket. Like that just brings it all kind of. Well, and it, it, it sort of echoes for me a little bit, the magician, right? The magician has mm -hmm. all the tools. Oh yeah. It, all the tools has all the right. tools. Yeah. 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 So definitely has all the tools needed for that to bring about, to nurture that creativity. Yes. Love it. Love it. I didn't realize that these were two like companion decks. Yeah, in fact, when you buy them, you can buy them separately, but you can buy them like I bought them like thirty bucks for both decks in a in, okay. in the box. Yeah, that is so cool. Wow. Yeah, and there are there are spreads that you can do that take both decks. 
that actually Ooh. Up both decks. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I haven't looked at any of them, but I know that there are. Um, because the idea is that whatever's going on here is going on in the spirit, is going on in the unseen realm, and this is going on in practical reality, like everyday reality. It's so how- which one of these, Kurt, because to me, the one with the mother and the son is the above deck, and the one on the left <laughs> is the below deck. This is the, this is the below, because it's occurring in reality that everybody can see. Oh, okay. Like somebody who, who is not in tune with flow of energy could see that and be like, oh, a well, mom's just taking care of her kid's knee. Does, wouldn't necessarily <laughs> see the magic. Right. So cool. Love it. Whereas like this is completely on an <laughs> like to perceive this, she would, have, yeah. Well, but you know, she's got those hard, like you were saying, CJ, the hardscapes and the softscapes there in one, you see those pulled out a little bit differently in terms of tone and mood in the two decks to the right. But I right. saw right away, I can see that. Now that we've seen them pulled out to see all of them here, that's just really cool. I love that. Um, love it. I love too how the crone is hidden, um, but not oh, yeah. central and sort of like reflects the way in which, uh, you know, this idea that the crone doesn't need to be seen anymore to understand um, the power of that phase of life or that phase of, of wisdom. It's really. And she's got the pinnacle above her head too. Which yeah. Is, she's crowned with the pinnacle, but, which is, you know, embl- emblematic of the cra- and, and this deck is very much the ab- above deck is very much for teaching the craft like it's like all of the cards have like this is the this is what you know this is what the goddess typically means in the craft and so on and so forth and like the next one in the sequence for this one is the god and so we'll see the horn we'll see the horned one Our actually yeah. Okay. yeah yeah okay the next one i'm so excited okay so Let's here, see. these are our um, oh. Tap and Wendy and, and, and Rosetta. The, the, the Rosetta one is my favorite. I love the colors in this one. Well, wait a sec. Did you did you advance the slides? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Oh, wow. So the Tabula Mundi one is the one on the left, and that's the same one as the DJ from the Correct. other night? Okay. Correct. And you see, she and she she's got Isis wings. She's got Isis's wings here. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and I'm liking that echoing of, of her opening the door to her heart, like you were talking about. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So that that that, that that the key is. Oh, love. that's yeah. She's actually got an open and then it door. And it echoes it down yes. here. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And what is this line, Kurt? The, there, so there's this line that goes from the echoed door down here. And the bees are flying on this circular yeah. line that connects so to her. What that, so what that is, um, that's the crossbar that the Empress is on, on the Kabbalistic Tree of Life. Okay. That yeah. line is supposed to represent that horizontal bar? Correct. I think, I think that's what it represents. Okay. Because it's a very deliberate line. Now look, in this card, there's two moons, like in Rachel Pollock's deck. Yes. And that's why I was saying it's a Kabbalistic thing because th- these are extremely Kabbalistic decks, these two. Yeah. And so the Empress, very deliberately, she's in between, you typically, she's typically in between the waxing and waning moons. So she sits between the waxing and waning moons. Right. So you have the two moons here and you, have, and you have the moons here as well. You got, well, yeah, you have, yeah here and here. Right. And she's also, she also has the wings, which is reminiscent of... Um, of the high priestess the um she's got the of course she's good they both have the wheat of course this um emblem here um i forget what kabbalistically what it's supposed to mean but it's um it actually it shows up on the emperor card also but it it was originally the family crest of the half of the Habsburgs. um and and they had uh, commissioned some very early pre- theory. Legend has it that they commissioned some very early tarot decks, right? So that so that their family crest kind of made its way into tarot iconography. 
Um, but and the you know and and astrologically the eagle has to do with you know soaring above uh, soaring above um, um, negativity as it were the spirit and so the the waves of the spirit and so forth. Um, I do like this, and I and I didn't notice this uh, CJ till you pointed it out, but I do like this door to the heart. Yeah, oh, but you see it on her chest, right? Oh yeah, yeah. so it's yeah. Both, so it's like it's like it's here, but then it's like this is this is this is the close up view. Yep. Yeah. Right, yeah. and then I I really want to study again what bees represent. Yeah. So bees came up, the bees came up in, in as far as the empress with the um, with the golden ratio. Because you see how they're flying. Okay, well, and it's on the, that line is a spiral oh, yeah. from inside yeah. her heart that flows okay. from I out. See. So, this is, so the, okay, so what I was talking about the horizontal line was this one, was the horizon line. I, oh, okay, okay, but look how that first B yeah. is coming yeah, exactly. from inside the pomegranate exactly. and all the way to exactly. the large B at the top, and it's spiraling outward from her actual yeah, yeah. essence of her heart. Yeah, and that's the golden ratio. That's the. I am in Kurt. You know I'm gonna have to have that deck. I know. Oh, well, it's this eighty is, bucks. <laughs> this is tabula. This is tabula mundi. Tabula mundi, and they have a new version with fourteen extra cards. Oh my! But yes. they didn't change the other cards, did they? No, they didn't. They okay. didn't. The expansion. It's like it's like freaking Pokemon. The expansion. They got. <laughs> Uh, no, but it's it's they're on series two of of this deck, um, and 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 they're apparently fast running low on series two. So I don't know. And the the artist is producing them, so it's like is producing them according to I guess according to need or according to and signs every deck. Like, is this like a something you find on Etsy or is this the? Oh, artist? you have to go to the website, the the artist's website, and purchase. Okay. They're, this, they're both the same artist, right? They're both the okay. same creator. That's um, so weird because that there's such different styles. Well, this what, one. What's this, the name of this one on the right? This is the Rosetta, and what? So, the the, the Tabula Mundi, the, the 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 genesis of it was it's supposed to be the the fool falling into the cosmos. Okay. The full, the full journeying through the spiral of the cosmos, and we see that in the in in the in the full card in this deck, and in the in the Magus card behind the Magus is the spot is the cosmos, right? But it's supposed, but but the idea was to take um, Alistair Crowley's um, Thoth um, iconography and correspondences and all that, and bring them into the 21st century. Mm -hmm. So it was like a, it was like an homage. In the and not 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 to like in the in the jazz in the jazz sense in the sense of jazz like the the best way that you can in jazz yeah. in jazz the best way the best compliment you can give to an artist is to is to redo is to play their piece you know to put right. spin on their piece and so that's what that was the tabula mundi is the Rosetta was okay this is Thoth's take on everything what about Thoth's wife. Ah, okay. that's so why the, it has that soft edge. Too. Yeah, so the Rosetta yeah. is basically the feminine version. Is, so look at her crown. She has 12 stars and she's got the triple moon at the top, but instead of the full moon in the middle, she's got a Christian cross. Mm -hmm. That is, that's the Venus symbol. Unless no, you on her crown. No, oh, on her, at the top of her. Oh. Star. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. And the cross. Oh, equal armed. I, I. You know, it looks. It, no, it's not equal armed because I looked uh -huh. at that before too. I, I. I. I think I looked at that before too. It's not equal armed. Okay. The cross. Crosses represent the crossing of a threshold, mm -hmm. like going from one reality to another. Oh, like we were talking about. And yeah. you know, she's cross. She's the crossbar on the tree of life too. So that probably is where that comes in, is being that crossbar, that vertical run on the tree of life. Both of these decks are gorgeous. Yeah, and they're expensive as all get out. I I'll, pull them, 
I probably, yeah, I probably am going to get them. I probably am going to get them because somebody that, if let me put it this oh, way. hey, we should have a Christmas party. If COVID is cool, we should have an in-person Christmas car, uh, Christmas party at the end of this. Uh huh. Like, our, have our last session be that where we can like take a deck and it could be one you don't resonate with or you don't want anymore. It doesn't have to be brand new or I could run out and buy a brand new deck for somebody, wrap it and then we put them on a table and people get- Oh, just, that's like, good, like a white that's elephant. That's a great type. idea. No, no, we don't yeah. have to steal them. You can trade if you want at the end, but we don't have to play it that way. But you get first choice if you came signed in number one yeah, whatever that, that, just that, 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 play that game yeah. where it's like the person who gets the gets to go first picks no. one are you talking that or what no, okay no 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 at the <laughs> end y'all can trade if you want to trade if you already have that deck or something i had but some like bring a deck to yeah share. yeah, yeah. It, let me put it this I'll way if the, if the artist site takes paypal i will probably have to uh get these decks because i had somebody pay me back some money that they owed me via paypal so <laughs> there you go we shall see we shall see now oh this, my god what's the next one so i have never really looked at this deck but it's an empress image that i found and i loved it because can it's you click on it? can you click on it um kurt to see the there we go <gasps> it's the cow and yeah. she's, she's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. This is the ant. Well, it says here the animal. I'm gonna have to get this app because it's only four bucks. And like, and and yeah, and yeah. It, it. I briefly sort of scanned through the the meaning of the 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 meaning from its book um, because it's like in a tarot sampler app, and they have different mm -hmm. things. But um, but yeah, it's like fertility, um, sustaining of life, and everything. Um, and of course, on the other side, we have our bunny rabbit mm -hmm. oh. in abundance. And now I really, really love this because, um, of course, the Black Madonna. Mm -hmm. um, and in the explanation for her, it talks about how um, in Europe during the Black Madonna was not very common until the plague mm -hmm. in Europe. And the, what makes the black and the black Madonna was carved out of um, black wood, dark wood, and so on and so forth. But people would actually um, pray to the black Madonna to um, relieve them of, essentially relieve them of disease, relieve them of all of the sufferings associated with the plague. So I take from that that in this in this time of COVID, in this time of pandemic, that the Empress is probably the the card the archetype that we need to be focused, focused on. on. Yeah. Um, you know, and interestingly, I was reading, you know, I was reading uh, some stuff and I have this one book on on my Kindle that's like 800 pages. It's 800 pages of, um, of car, you know, cards, uh, ca Kabbalistic uh, stuff with cards. And um, they go, they have little meditations. They also have sample reading, like, sample interpretations of readings and it was an it was real interesting because the person had drawn the lovers and the empress together and what they were saying was that when you get the empress with another card it's essentially asking you to think about if that other situation that 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 paired situation if you are allowed to be creative in that situation. <laughs> so, so if you like, for example, if you get the lover, if the lovers comes up, what the Empress is asking you is, um, does that love connection allow, allow you to express your creativity, mm -hmm. allow you to express, you know? Wow. Yeah, which I thought, I thought that was really cool. Yeah. And um, basically, like every, this is going to sound, this is going to sound crass, but basically like every description, almost every description of the Empress that I have come across, the meditation that they give or that they talk about in relation to the Empress is penetrate. Mm -hmm. the, Empress is, the Empress is asking us to allow ourselves to be penetrated, be mm -hmm. penetrated by 
um, you know, uh, creative energy, be penetrated by um, um, that which would inspire us and so forth. Because the, the, the other aspect of the empress is passion, all different, different aspects of passion, um, you know. So. And I really like that, and I didn't put it on the, the Jamboard or the PDF because I have a hard time like getting my, getting, I have a hard time typing on the Jamboard for some reason that doesn't work out for me, but I put it in the, um, the chat, I put it on the, the event page, Rachel mm -hmm. Pollock's um, reading uh, spread for the, that. Which I thought was great. I thought that was fantastic. Mm -hmm. I really, I really, really like that. Um, and again, that's that's something that is extremely, you know, timely, not only for, you know, COVID, but also the fact that we're, you know, what we're dealing with politically and socially right now. Yeah. And, you know, the fact that tonight is the first new moon of um, 2021. Oh, shoot. New moon in Sagittarius. And supposedly we're supposed to meditate upon um, what 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 does our faith bring us? Is what we're supposed to meditate upon with the new moon in Sagittarius? Say that again. What does our faith bring us? Yes, and if you look at that reading for the emperor, that spread for the empress, that's essentially what that's asking. It's asking about the empress, but the way that. Rachel Pollack phrases all those questions and how those questions fit together. Um, um, that's really what, if you want to share that, Denise, I'll stop share and you can, if you want to bring that up, you can. The what? The, uh, on the questions? Facebook event page that, that. Um, the questions? Questions, no. yeah. Uh oh. Is that what you're going to, yeah, let me go ahead and share. Um, we're actually making a little bit of time, even though we started so late. Yeah, it's, it's those right there. Right here. What is yeah. my passion? How um, have I expressed it? How can I express it more fully? What blocks me? What frees me? What do I nurture? What does it ask of me? What does it give me? And how can I bring together my passion and my nurturance? Oh and my CJ, God. That's CJ, those are great questions. I saw those and I went, what? CJ, it's already on our page, like on our event page. I know, but I like to look at things in my phone. Okay, okay, okay. I just, in case Sometimes you- Sometimes I don't have Wi-Fi or something. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. And you also have the book. You have the-, you have the I, I know, but sometimes all we have okay. is our phone. Okay, okay. I just didn't want to stress you out. Like, you man, trying to write all that down. Like, no, and taking a picture is a tactic too, because it's like I use uh -huh. anyway. It's a whole nother conversation. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I get it. I I do the same thing. It's uh, like taking notes and not reading them. No, I do the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Totally. I but love. I, it. I just love that. Do we have questions? Like, are we gonna? Are we skipping that part tonight? Which is I fine. I mean, yeah. we have, we have, um, actually we are, are we over time? We are over time, but. Over time. but the questions that you're talking about, the ones that we've been kind of, we've, we've been doing through, three, right? We pretty much yeah. answered them in the course of our conversation. Yes, no, no, I know. Um, yeah. but the first is what, what, what do you see? And then the other one is what do you want to say? Yeah. Let me, the words, the ones that we've been using pretty much every week are, Number one, if you, um, you can take a picture of these two, um, CJ, if you want. Uh, the first one. Oh, 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 yeah. So I'll post those questions in the event just event details. Page. So yeah. that way they'll always be there. And um, I'm not a technology person. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, what words come to mind when you look at this card? And that's what we kind of did. We sort of did that already. Um, yeah. Y'all were helping me a lot with like understanding these cards because y'all are pointing out details that I I love it. See, yeah. I love that we riff off of each other. That's awesome. Yeah. And then, then we focused on the other one is that we tend to focus on more um, is number three. What do you like about the card or what yeah. do you like about it? 
And then we usually kind of skip down to question five. What do you want to say to this card? You know, what do you want to say to the Empress? And it seems like uh, in my notes, I have another question that's not on there. Oh, no, I guess I don't. Huh. Those are the three that we focused in the last few meetings, but there's actually six of them. It's just that yeah. we don't ever really have enough time to do all of them. So if you have this, you know, you can work on the others if you want. Uh, in between. Oh, I'm trying to start doing your tarot journal even once a week. <laughs> well, see, yeah. that's why I type. That's why I type it in on the on the on the thing because then I know I'll I'll do it. I'll stop. I type my answers in on the on the. No joke. You know, I think that I think the real secret to having like a tarot journal or a journal of any kind is to be is to get to it when you get to it, you know? And so sometimes that's once a week, sometimes that's twice a week, sometimes it's three times a week. And some weeks it's not at all because we got, you know, we had faculty start back on Monday, forget about it, right? So it's like, ah, the gates are open and, and um, I'm off, you know, boom, we're running. But what I will say is that I, you know, when I get back to it, I'll get back to it. And I, and that's okay. But the idea of like, posting them every day is so that way when people can grab them. Now, this is where I want to hear feedback from, from, from folks is, you know, posting them every day. I know that not everybody's going to resonate with that particular question. It's not going to like move them to go in and, and do that kind of reading or that pick a card or whatever. But it adds card. interest. Right. But it adds interest. And so I, you know, I can keep posting them every day and people can, can do with them what they will. Right. Or I can slow it down to maybe three times a week. Um, so I'd like to hear from you guys what you think is, uh, you know, keep posting them daily um, if, or if slow down. Time, if you have time, post them daily. If you don't have time, then yeah. Well, what I do is I batch them, I schedule them in, yeah. and then they, they, they'll post it daily. So that's not a big so deal. So you're, can I figure out how to schedule posts in our group? Yeah, oh, yeah. You're a, you're yeah. A, yeah, yeah, I can show you. You're an admin, right? So you can, yeah, you can totally do that. It's okay, so what I thought I might do for our next week is take the card we're going to study, or I can do it after each of our meetings here. And I thought I would take the physical cards I have, uh -huh. and each one would be at separate posts during the week, and oh, maybe... Sweet mention something we talked about in our discussion oh see, that would be awesome i love that yeah afterwards would be great because then people would be like oh they talked about that that's that's a cool you know okay well I'll then i think the i want to start doing that i'll go watch the video or i'll try to show it. yeah but denise in order for me to make that a reality and happen because i embody this card to the max and chaos is part of it uh -huh. A huge part of it, I have to learn how to schedule it. So like on tonight or tomorrow or before tonight or whatever, I can at least draft my posts and start them yeah. and be, be done at one time, not every day. Let me, um, Kurt, you can probably, I can show you that right now if you guys I'm going to do it later. Oh. I'm going to end the recording. Hold on. Oh. If you end the recording, we say bye, everybody. Bye. Um, I don't need to see the tutorial on how to do <laughs> scheduled posts on Facebook. <laughs> so yeah, so I take, and so since I have more than seven decks, what I'll do is I'll pick my favorite.